the second guy here, we have seen some glimpses of some pretty good play out of him. Um, I've turned into a, a Tershawn Horton fan. They call him Turk Horton, and I like that name a lot. Mark, your story actually, Missouri s and grad, local, I guess you can call it a local kid. s and in what, Rolla? Is that where that's at? I believe um, so. I think it's Rolla because Joplin is Missouri Southern. Yes, yep. it's Rolla. Um, I get those two confused because they have like the same colors. But yes, they're, two different, they're both like, conferences too. Yeah. I was going to say, are they both green and yellow? Is that what they are? Yeah. That... s and is the minors. Um, okay. Missouri Southern's the Lions. They play in the MIAA. I think that you're going to really see my knowledge of Division II athletics show right here. This is what I get for spending two years in Mary. Well, my whole college career, I guess, in Maryville covering D2 sports. But um, they're in the GAC, I think, Great American Athletic Conference, which also with like William Jewell, uh, S&T is, and uh, Truman State, which is in Kirksville. Uh, Drury also, I believe, is in that conference as well. So, Lots of D2 schools around the area. <laughs> William uh, Jewell, I'm, I'm doing a fist because William Jewell used to be a rival of my Mid-American Nazarene Pioneers yes. back when I went there, and they moved from NAIA to D2. So they made mm-hmm. the jump, and I, we were fine with it. We didn't like them. So, you know, that's fine. They can play uh, Missouri S&T, and that's good for them. <laughs> yeah, they do. I don't I don't know how good their football program is. I really don't. I live in Liberty, too. Uh, William Jewell's, like, in my – vicinity it's within walking distance probably i don't know if i should walk it but anyway um it's kind of a lot of a lot of hills there there's a lot lot of hills (laughs) but no i'm i'm familiar with william jewel and and probably too many division two colleges across the country i'm familiar with uh but that's just the way it goes that's the path i've chosen to take but anyway tershawn horton a d2 guy that's gotten familiar with a lot of d2 backfields yeah he was a menace for missouri s and t Got to show what he was able to do in year one. And I really was impressed with Tershawn Horton. I think he impressed a lot of people. I think I wrote a story about him when he was signed as, a, as, as an undrafted free agent. Just basically like, hey, this kid's local. He went to s and Now he's in Kansas City. That's kind of a cool story. And it was one of those things where I remember, um, wow, I cannot remember his name. Josh Caldwell used to play at Missouri Western. He also used to play up at Northwest Missouri State. He was an undrafted free agent. Um, signed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Kind of a cool story from Kansas City. He ends up scoring a touchdown, I believe, in the first preseason game, but then was later cut, signed by the Chicago Bears. He's not in the league anymore. But I thought it was going to be one of those stories of, okay, they're giving this kid a chance. He gets to play. Now they didn't have preseason games last year. He's going to get to play some games, and then he'll probably just be cut. But no, Tershawn Horton comes in, proves to be a force, plays that, I believe he was playing the one tech and was a pretty solid uh, pass rushing one tech combo mm-hmm. with there with uh with a uh, uh, wow chris jones i forgot his name all of a sudden how can i forget chris <laughs> jones's name but now you start looking at this defensive line if they do shift chris jones out to d end you got d or you got <laughs> i almost said d end you got chris jones you got jaron reed you've got turk horton then you got frank clark you know barring all the legal things but that's yeah. the that's what's on paper <laughs> right now that looks pretty salty what do you think about turk yeah, Turk showed some stuff last year, and he played, I think, about 50% of the defensive snaps, which was really impressive yeah. for an undrafted uh, free agent. And, you know, being able to get, I think it was three sacks on the season, um, that's, I mean, solid production there for a guy that you didn't expect to get in there and play a whole lot. And I think he was also top five in quarterback hurries among rookies last year. So when you wow. see stuff like that, it's like, what, you know, yeah, it's, it's almost like a, wow, you kind of step back for a second. And you're like, Tershawn Wharton, like halfway through the season, we're all like, who is Tershawn Wharton? We're all like, you know, getting excited about it. And which that's good because you need to hit on some guys like that when you're paying, you know, all the big dudes, uh, sure. you know, you got, we don't have to go through the list. We know who they are at this point. Mm-hmm. You got your seven high paid guys, you know, maybe eight, depending on what happens here with some of these guys coming up, but yeah, you got to have guys like Wharton that you can have on there for about three or four years at a pretty cheap rate. And then, uh, you know, if, if they're super stars, you know, maybe you can sign them to another deal or at that point you just got to let them walk. But uh, Mm -hmm. I think Wharton's a guy that, like you said, he can continue to get more snaps and more playing time. And, you know, the more attention, he takes away the more that Frank can, you know, get in there, the more that Chris Jones yeah. can get in there. So, you know, it, it is, you know, a, a part of the 
reason why he probably didn't get as much attention because they the other the offensive line is focusing on the other guys so he can sneak in there but I don't know how much he's going to be able to be sneaky anymore with how well he played last year yeah it's a good point uh from University City was born there kind of I think that's by uh St. Louis right so he's he's from the state of Missouri he had 27 tackles last year two sacks four quarterback hits four tackles for loss I don't think you could ask for anything better from an undrafted guy, honestly, coming in and playing, as you mentioned, a, a lot of the snaps. He was in 48% of the defensive snaps last year, um, so about half. Uh, that's that's pretty good for a guy who was undrafted out of a Division II school, coming in, getting two sacks. Uh, I, I, I'm – over the moon with how Tershawn Ward has already panned out. And I hope that he can continue the pace he's on. And you mentioned, you know, Chris Jones and Frank Clark. Maybe that's why he was able to get in there, get his nose dirty. Maybe he could continue to do that. Cause maybe these guys got to focus again on, on Jaron Reed. They got to focus on yeah. Chris Jones. They got to focus on Frank Clark. Maybe this is a perfect opportunity for Tershawn Horton. And that's pretty exciting for me. Yeah, and another thing that I was thinking about as I was writing these second-year jumps, last year I didn't do any undrafted free agent second-year jumps, Hmm. and I think it's because there wasn't any of note that really made an impact. So when I saw a couple guys that actually did have an impact this year, I was like, all right, I need to add those guys to the list to write about because uh, when you're coming off of a Super Bowl win, you don't really expect to have undrafted free agents be guys that step in and be key parts of the team. So Mm -hmm. you see a guy like Wharton come in and uh, Townsend, I mean, Townsend's a little bit of a different position, but yeah, seeing Wharton come in and play right in the defensive front and, get in there and get nasty, get after it. That's, that's just exciting to see as a Chiefs fan. That will do it for today's podcast preview. If you enjoyed the preview, make sure to check out the full show out on your favorite podcast provider. Don't know how to find it. Go to smarturl.it backslash roughing. Got a splash page. You can find your favorite provider there and find the show there or go into the search bar of your favorite show, type in roughing the kicker. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. It really helps us out. If you enjoy the channel and the podcast as a whole, subscribe and obviously get that notification bell on because you don't want to miss any more podcast previews. We'll be back with another video soon. So until then, I'll talk to you next time.